Hi everyone and welcome back. Nowadays, almost all cars come equipped with the latest technologies available, if you can afford them, of course. <laughs> Some of these extra options include upgraded lighting systems like your headlights, tail lights, or ambient lights. So, today we'll talk about tail light LED upgrades. As some cars still use incandescent bulbs for the taillights, it's no wonder that manufacturers will sell you LED replacements for these cases. But the question is, should you do it? Do these products offer any advantages or are they just trash, ready to set your car on fire? Well, that's what we'll try to find out today. I bought 10 different LED bulbs to compare with the classic incandescent type among which we also have the Philips Extreme Ultinon Generation 2 and the Osram LED Driving, which will be given away. More details about that later. First, we'll take a short overview of each product lined up, after which we'll perform a light output test, followed by a temperature check using the thermal vision camera and, of course, an endurance test. Let's get started! So there are a lot of different types of bulbs, and that's because the lights of the car are the main distinguishing factor between the brands. And every car manufacturer is trying to come up with better and better designs. Moreover, the bulb design must allow easy replacements and have protection features in place with the purpose of preventing users of installing incorrect bulbs, although this doesn't seem to stop them. <laughs> that's why the main difference between them is the mounting system and the power. Tail lights generally have four or five functions. Brake light, position light or parking light, turn signal lights and reversing lights. And in some countries they also have fog lights. But today we'll only focus on brake lights and parking lights, which must always have the color red. I decided to go for the BAY-15D mount, which has the brake light and parking light in the same bulb. The reason why I've chosen this type is because it's the most challenging design for which to manufacture LED retrofits. The classic incandescent bulb has two filaments, one for the brake light, which typically has 21 watts, and one for the parking light, which has around 5 watts, and therefore the bulb can have four states, off, brake light on, parking light on, or both lights on. In order to achieve this, LED manufacturers can use two different approaches. One uses low power LEDs for the parking light, and some other high power LEDs for the brake light. Although only one bulb from this comparison uses this method. And two, all LEDs light up at reduced power when the parking light is on and go full power when the brake light is on. The biggest problem that LEDs have is of course thermal management, as we could saw in my previous episode on headlight bulbs. This can get pretty hot and can fail if not cooled properly. So let's take a look at the products lined up. Because most of these are made in China, they do not have a specific brand associated with them. You may find them rebranded under a lot of other names, but they're basically the same. So in order to avoid confusion, I'll associate a letter to each one for easier referencing. And starting with the cheapest one, bulb A, which is just a PCB with 22 LEDs stuck to a mounting base. No heatsink or IP rating. Bulb B is the second cheapest with 27 LEDs, again no heatsink and protection. Bulb C, which is similar to the previous but has a metal housing and a lens on top. I'm not sure why though. Bulb D with 24 LEDs mounted on a metal housing with a fancier look. Bulb E with a strange conical design, it has 10 LEDs and a metal housing. This is probably the second most compact product in this comparison after Bulb A. Bulb F, another conical design in a metal housing, this has 48 LEDs in total. Bulb G, a two-sided LED bulb using two CSP LED chips. Now CSP chips are very bright and we usually found these in headlight bulbs. Hopefully this is not that bright. Bulb H is the biggest one with 144 LEDs everywhere. <laughs> this also has a glass cover for protection but no heatsink. Now the Osram bulb with a very interesting design and the only one using different LEDs for each light function. Four LEDs in total, two of which are low power for the parking light and two are high power LEDs for the brake light. These are mounted on a metal frame which is also the heatsink. And finally the Philips bulb. It has a similar design to the Osram with six LEDs facing backwards. This is also the second biggest after bulb H because of that white heatsink. Ok, now that we know the products, we'll start with the light output test. Under United Nations regulations, brake lights must have a brightness ranging from 27 to 82 lux at 1.5 meters and a bit higher for North America. 
So I'll first start with the classic incandescent bulb as a control, after which we'll move on to the LEDs. The tail light was positioned at 1.5 meters from the projection surface and I'll be using a lux meter to measure the output. For the brake light the control has 70 lux and for the parking light it has 2 lux, which is 35 times less than the braking light. This difference is very important so that the driver behind you can spot immediately when you are braking. Also having such a low light output for the parking light, you will not disturb anyone driving behind you. Now let's see how the LEDs do, starting with bulb A. And immediately we can spot the problem. For both light settings, the lux meter is unable to record the reading, meaning that the light output is less than 1 lux at this distance. This product is very dangerous and should not be used. Bulb B is next. For the braking light it has a maximum output of 1 lux and for the parking light 0 lux. Again we have the same problem. Bulb C again has a maximum reading of 1 lux for the braking light and 0 lux for the parking light. What the... is there a pattern emerging here? Hopefully some of these LEDs will be better than this. Bulb D now and we can finally see some light again. The braking light has 24 lux and 9 lux for the parking light, which is approximately 2.5 times dimmer. Bulb E is a bit brighter with a maximum reading for the braking light of 30 lux and 8 lux for the parking light. Bulb F has a maximum reading of 30 lux and 6 lux. Bulb G has a very weird light projection because of the two-sided design. It has 66 lux for the braking light and 24 lux for the parking light, although the light is projected sideways. Bulb H has 68 lux and 17 lux. I thought that this will melt your eyes, but it still has lower light output than a classic incandescent bulb. Now let's see how Osram performs. The maximum light output is 67 lux for the brake light and 4 lux for the parking light. And finally the Philips bulb. This has 71 lux for the brake light and 7 lux for the parking light. Ok, so as we could saw, most of them are useless, basically, <laughs> and should never be used. The ones that come close to the incandescent bulb have a relatively small difference between the two light settings, which can present a risk if someone behind doesn't notice that you're braking. We still need to measure how hard these products get, but before that, let's make a side-by-side -side comparison with the classic bulb. Depending on your specific usage, bulbs can be mounted straight, as we could saw earlier, and in some cases it can sit sideways. For a classic bulb, this doesn't affect the performance, as it emits light in all directions, but LEDs can have difficulties. So you should consider this before choosing a product. Here we have two identical stoplights side by side. On the left we have the incandescent bulb, and on the right we have the LEDs. Let's see how they compare. So far, in my opinion, the Osram is doing the best job at replicating the light intensity of the classic bulb. The ones before either had very poor light output or had too much light output for the parking light setting. And it looks like Philips also has a great result. It's quite difficult to capture the color hue of these bulbs on camera, but another advantage which these LEDs offer is the pure red color with very rich and saturated hues compared to the classic bulb which has an orangish hue. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, LEDs can get hot if not cooled properly. So using a thermal vision camera, let's measure their performance. We'll start with the classic bulb to have a control. The maximum temperature reach around 175 degrees Celsius, which is expected from an incandescent bulb with both filaments on, running at 14 volts. Now it's time for the LEDs, starting with A. Holy 211 degrees Celsius. I don't even understand how the heck it's not melting or burning out. Not even headlight bulbs get that hot, and this is tested in an open environment, 
Imagine having this bulb in your tail lights on a very hot summer day. <laughs> Let's see how the next one does. 95, 96 Celsius, still a lot for an LED bulb. Bulb C now, 94, 95 Celsius seems to be the highest. Next, 180, 181 maximum. Wow, <laughs> didn't imagine that. Next is bulb E, 103, 107 max, still very hot. The Christmas tree is next, bulb F. Wow, a very manageable 70, 73 degrees Celsius, the best yet, if you can say that. Bulb G now, yeah, 140, 143, I expected this one to get hot. Now bulb H, the big one, 115, 116 degrees. And this is the glass temperature on the outside, I imagine that inside it's getting much, much hotter. Next is Dosram. 50, 54 degrees max. Yeah, well, the difference is pretty obvious, it has the best result so far. And last is Philips. 59, 60 degrees Celsius right on the LEDs. Again, a very good result compared to the Chinese bulbs. Imagine having this bulb in your tail lights on a very hot summer day. <laughs> hmm. On a hot day, I believe that it would get around 60 or 70 degrees Celsius inside the tail light. Heck, if you live in Australia, it would probably get even hotter. So I'll set my oven to 7 degrees Celsius and after the bulbs reach this temperature, I'll turn them on. Mmm, toasty. 215, 220 in some spots. Well, I imagine to go much higher. So all bulbs got around 10 or 20 degrees hotter in the oven. Except one. <laughs> as far as I know, LEDs and other components which get hot during operation must be manufactured from flame retardant materials. These materials still melt if exposed to high temperatures, but they won't catch fire. In case of this LED, I presume that whoever made it used some inappropriate glue or something was left behind which ignited. Ok, and the final part is the endurance test, more exactly a vibration test. As LEDs handle on-off cycles very well, I decided to perform just this experiment as it's the toughest one to pass. I didn't use my jig for this because I wanted to expose these products to a lot more vibrations. Therefore, the LEDs were strapped to my multi-cutter tool, which oscillates 12,000 times a minute, and the time limit for this test is 15 minutes. If the products survive this, they can probably survive going to Mars. <laughs> on the first run, you can see the classic bulb on the left, and of course this failed as the filament is very susceptible to vibrations. Other than this one, no other LED failed, which shows that from an endurance point of view they are really good. So now that we performed all the necessary tests, let's break it all down, starting with bulb A. And honestly, there's nothing good to say about this. Avoid it at all costs, don't spend your money on this trash, and don't set your car on fire with this junk. I should give a rating for this, but my rating doesn't go that low. Just forget about it. Bulb B, C and D are exactly the same. Garbage. Very low light output and a fire hazard. Avoid them at all costs and just like before, forget about them. Bulb E and F starts to have more light output, but still very low compared with the classic bulb. My rating for this is... Go home son, you're drunk. Bulb G is pretty bright, but the design can have a negative impact on the light projection, and the parking light is much too bright. My rating for this is... You can do better. Bulb H finally has some good light output, but still not better than the classic. However, it gets pretty hot and although it didn't fail in the oven, I would not trust this bulb. My rating for this is, you can do better. Now the Osram bulb, at last, one product that we can compare with the classic bulb. In my opinion, this is a very good choice, even though it's far more expensive than the Chinese products. Light output is excellent and thermal management is also excellent. The plastic housing surrounding the metal frame is translucent. And whenever the light is on, this also spreads the light so that it appears to be smaller. Very nice product. My rating for this is... Shut up and take my money. And finally, the Philips bulb. And just like the Osram product, this has excellent characteristics. Light output is even better than Osram and is the only one higher than the classic bulb. 
So if you're interested in such products, don't expect it to be brighter than the incandescent type. As we could saw, none of them were. Only Philips of just one lux, and that difference you can barely notice it. If you need these products, buy them for the increased reliability, or for the saturated color, or for the fact that they can be instantly on or off. My rating for Philips is... Shut up and take my money. Now we know that if you need replacements, Philips and Osram can provide. But products from China should stay far away from your car. But now that I have them... Hmm... I cannot just throw them away. Maybe there's something I can do with them. Wait a minute. Just a moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at this. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Totally not a fire hazard. Where's the extinguisher? Okay. <laughs> so, that's all I have for you today. If you liked this episode and found it useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing. If you have a friend using some of these uh, Chinese products, do him a favor and send him this video before he goes out in a blaze of glory. The Osram and the Philips bulb will be sent to two of my Patreon members, so if you would like to support me in making more episodes like this and at the same time have a chance to get some of the products that I'll test, you can join at the link in the description. You can also follow me on social media where I post updates for the projects that I'm working on and you can check my website for more details about the tests I do. If you're watching this as it gets released, I wish you happy holidays and a well, a better new year. <laughs> Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye bye and a great year. Bye. Yeah.